Information laundering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. When Rudy Giuliani shared bad intel from Ukraine, or when TikTok influencers say COVID can cause pain, they're laundering disinfo, and we really should take note and not support their lies with our wallet, voice, or vote. Oh. Who is that? Come on, that can't be a real person. Well, indeed, that is. That is Nina Jankowitz, uh, Joe Biden's choice to head a new disinformation board at the Department of Homeland Security. You couldn't make it up. Uh, just incredible. The treasure trove of commentaries, many of them musical uh, by Nina Jankowicz that are just right out there. Uh, <laughs> the New York Post, one of the best headline writers in the business. Uh, they had this cover story a while back. They called her Scary Poppins, not Mary Poppins. And the New York Post again today, a great column by our friend Ben Weingarten. The headline is, you couldn't have picked a worse minister of truth than Nina Jankowitz, but actually I think she is the perfect minister of truth in the Orwellian sense that she'll do anything, say anything to, to flatter the regime. And joining us now via Skype is our friend Ben Weingarten, who writes for The Federalist and is with the Claremont Institute. Ben, great to see you again. Uh, you you publish so many interesting things in great uh, titles. You're in Newsweek sometimes. Here you are in uh, the New York Post. Tell us a little bit more about Nina Jankowitz. I actually haven't dug into this for our viewers yet, but she is riveting in the same way a car crash. You just can't look away. Tell us more about Nina Jankowitz. Well, well, thanks for having me. And this is a, in some ways, ridiculous topic, but in other ways, one of the most important topics when it comes to what I've cast as a war on wrong thing that's been going on in America. And Nina Jankowitz, we recently found out in testimony, I believe, from the secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, is chairing, serving as the czar of the so-called Disinformation Governance Board, the DGB, within the Department of Homeland Security. And according to DHS, this department is not operational, except that it's coordinating all of its work with a slew of other clearly operational bodies, including the DHS and other government agencies. Set that aside for a moment. And Jankowitz herself is, of course, the last person to serve as an arbiter of truth in an organ that should not exist in the U.S. governmental system, period, full stop. We do not need disinformation governance boards. We certainly don't need them housed within the DHS, that is, with a inherently domestic focus. And this is, of course, the last, the last administration to be telling us to be trying to separate truth from fiction when it's been one of the greatest purveyors, for example, of what it cast as disinformation with respect to the coronavirus, for example, and then ended up flip-flopping and pro promoting it as the truth. And Jankowitz herself, of course, perfectly ref reflects this administration on, on three levels. The first is that she is the last person to be an arbiter of truth because she herself has been a prolific purveyor of disinformation. This is someone who is a Russiagate collusion monger who's promoted the work of Christopher Steele, told the untruth that the Steele dossier, which is at the core of the entire Russiagate fraud, uh, itself was funded by Republicans, not true. This is someone who is also partisan, something that you wouldn't want if you were supposed to have a neutral arbiter of truth, which of course, again, the US government shouldn't be in the business of, this is someone who was said, tweeted, hashtag I'm with her with respect to Hillary Clinton and quoted Hillary Clinton in 2016 with this ill-fated statement that the most dangerous thing I'm paraphrasing here about Donald Trump would be that he would embolden and empower ISIS when, of course, Donald Trump helped destroy ISIS, ultimately. Someone who claimed, of course, this is the biggest promoter of untruth here, someone who claimed that Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation when, of course, that was an American information operation, in effect. The New York Post reporting there has been vindicated. Someone who was an ardent defender, actually, of Hunter Biden's work with Burisma, as, yeah. well, as, as well as a defender of Joe Biden, who she claimed in a November 2020 piece in Foreign Affairs 
was uniquely suited to combat disinformation and called for the creation in that article of a counter disinformation czar, basically lobbying for the creation of a position in which she now, she now sits. Last but not least, as for free speech, this is someone who wants people, blue check marks like her and white and blue check marks like her, to be able to add context, so-called, to tweets, that is to be able to edit tweets, conferring their wisdom upon them and batting down you know, the disinformation of politicians they don't like or commentators they don't like, and who also said that she shudders, this is her word, shudders, to think about free speech absolutists purchasing social media platforms. So on every level, in terms of herself being a spewer of disinformation, in terms of being a partisan hack, it would seem, based upon her public positions, and then on the fact that she is not devoted to free speech, clearly, on each one of these bases, that makes her the worst minister of truth, but also the perfect minister of truth for this regime. And this ministry that she's going to be overseeing is supposedly tasked with combating mis, dis, and malinformation regarding irregular migration, that is illegal immigration, particularly from our southern border, and then Russian disinformation going into the midterm. So as I ask in this piece, does that mean that if you if you bring up the fact that the Biden administration has engaged in sovereignty eviscerating policies with respect to our southern border and that that, that thus provokes uh, or compels people to rush those borders, are you a purveyor of dangerous disinformation? What about if the equivalent of the Hunter Biden laptop story fell into our laps tomorrow? Would the DHS and other agencies cast that as Russian disinformation going into a midterm election, thus interfering in that election? All of these questions are open questions and they deserve more than scrutiny. This, this bureau should not exist, but even more broadly, the war on wrong thing that it's part and parcel of, which we've talked about here before, should not exist. Yeah. That was an excerpt from my daily TV style show called The Ezra Levant Show. Each weekday, I do a monologue on the news of the day. Then I interview a fascinating guest. I read some fan mail or hate mail, depends on which I like more. And we end with a video of the day. You can get it all at rebelnewsplus.com.